A lot of the best pitchers on tonight's slate for Daily Fantasy Baseball are dealing with something, whether it's weather, bad matchups, bad pitch counts, something like that is impacting a lot of the key guys we typically focus on within the main slate for Daily Fantasy Baseball. And that's annoying because I do like those top end guys, but also I think it opens the door for an actual legitimate value play to be super viable for Daily Fantasy for tonight. We're going to dive in and break down who that value play is, why we're even considering them as far as things that impact the other guys, and then get you ready for tonight's slate in MLB DFS. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, here to break down Wednesday's 10-game main slate with locks up for 7.05 p.m. Eastern, for today weather notes on this slate the first one is in cleveland for the guardians and red sox the winds there are in from center at 12 miles per hour that is a slight downgrade to bats for the guardians and red sox the two big rain chances for tonight are both impacting potential top end starters for today the first one is in atlanta for the braves and mets that could be a risk of a delay or postponement. Check back on that later on. That is where Max Scherzer and Charlie Morton both are. And then Logan Webb is in Denver. So it's a course. So he might not have gone there anyway, but it is in Denver for the Rockies and Giants. Chance of rain there as well. That game also could be at risk. So check back on that one later, both for Webb, but also for more importantly, stacking for today. So the key weather spots as far as potential postponements are in Atlanta and Denver. I think they'll both be good to go, but especially when you're considering pitchers, delays, always a bigger scare because a delay could yank them from that game early on. So check back on weather for Atlanta and Denver. Again, I think they'll play, but it does at least introduce a bit more chaos for this slate. We'll dive on in and get you ready, outline what that means, and discuss our fun value play for tonight in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. We record our PGA DFS podcast for the RBC Canadian Open uh, amid all the live news yesterday. So that was kind of chaotic for sure. But we still talked about our top plays for this weekend at the RBC Canadian Open. To get that, search for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. Have you ever started a player in fantasy that scores three points while someone on your bench puts up 20? Well, with FanDuel's NFL Best Ball Drafts, you don't have to worry about that. Draft your team in each week. The highest scoring lineup from your roster will be used as you battle for first place all season long. Leagues can be free to play or for money and range from three to 12 players. The NFL season will be here before you know it. So head over to FanDuel today and get on, on the action. Age and residency restrictions apply. Pitching preview for this Wednesday main slate. Logan Webb comes in with the highest salary in FanDuel, despite being at Coors Field. Kind of odd at $11,000. Typically, we get about a $2,000 discount. No dice here. Charlie Morton, nine, or 10 5 in that Atlanta rain. Corbin Burns, 10000 Chris Bass at 98 We got Max Scherzer facing Morton at 96 John Gray at 95 Tanner Bybee, 9000 With Dean Kramer, Jack Flaherty, and Lance Lynn as the other guys at $8,000 or higher. Now... We will get to the value play. We'll stick them in the value section because I do think that some of the studs could still be in play despite some risk here. And there is one top end guy who is not in bad weather, kind of is, but there is a roof to protect him from it should they decide to deploy, which I think they will for today. That is John Gray. He is at a uh, he's at home. They have a retractable roof there. I'd assume that they have a close for today. That makes the park factor better for this game. Not a great matchup for Gray, but. He is going to be my top guy, all things considered. Gray is facing the Cardinals and don't love that matchup by any means. They have a 109 WRC plus against righties. Not a ton of strikeouts, but Gray himself has been pitching really well. Gray did struggle quite a bit to open this year, and I actually, I think, stacked against him in one of his games, but... Five starts ago, he really cut back on his four-seam fastball usage, and that tweak has made all the difference in the world. Across those five starts, Gray has a 3.71 skill interactive ERA with a 26% strikeout rate. He is letting up fly balls, but they haven't been all that hard hit. The results for Gray have been awesome too. Just three total earned runs in this stretch across 34 innings pitched. He's had five plus strikeouts in each game. He's had eight twice. 
due to the matchup here against St. Louis, I have him at 6.3 strikeouts tonight, so not a huge number. But for this slate specifically, it's actually not that bad. And with no weather to deal with here, I'm fine building around Gray as my top pitcher. So I'll put him there among the studs for today and make John Gray our top guy there. Now, both Max Scherzer and Charlie Morton, as mentioned, are very viable, but dealing with the potential for rain in Atlanta. So I don't want to talk about both. So we'll talk about just one of them. Uh, both of them are fun. I'm going to talk Scherzer because I prefer him over Morton. But if we get the all clear on weather, Morton would be very much in play too. Scherzer, obviously, given that he's facing Morton, is facing the Braves, which is a tough matchup. But it's not a low strikeout one. They're about average in that department. And Scherzer seems like he's almost fully back. He's let up one or fewer earned runs in each of his past four games. He had a lot of good matchups in there, so we should caveat it with that. But did face the Phillies. They're not an amazing offense right now, but they're fine. He held the Phillies to um, just one earned run, nine strikeouts, seven innings. And this was keyed off, similar to Gray, with a change in Scherzer's approach. He started throwing his change up more often five starts ago. And that one start, that first one, was pretty rough, but the rest has been nice, even lumping in that bad start. He's been pretty good. 3.49 is skill interactive ERA, 27% strikeout rate, 4% walk rate, 32% hard hit rate allowed. And that does make sense because the changeup, the one he's been using more, has been pretty good this year. Just a 248 X Woba against it, according to Baseball Savant. Not a huge strikeout pitch, but does help him limit the hard contact. So Scherzer's not in a perfect spot here against the Braves in the road, but it is enough for me to feel good about it. And I like Scherzer enough to put him second behind John Gray. So among the studs, I will go John Gray one, Scherzer two. If we get the all clear on weather, I'd go more than three as far as ranking of the studs for tonight. As mentioned, the studs, though, are not perfect. And we've got a window to spend down. And luckily for us, there is actually a guy, I think, worth spending down on. That guy is Jaime Barrio. Still stretching out to be a starter here for the Angels, but he hit 91 pitches last time out, and I think that gives us the leeway to give him a sniff for tonight at just $6,200. Perea is facing the Cubs. Uh, they are a high strikeout offense, 25% strikeout rate against righties in the current active roster, which does give Berea a boost. But he has gotten six strikeouts already in each of his first two starts. Only two starts so far, and he had six strikeouts in both. Uh, the first one came on just 64 pitches. But as mentioned, he's now fully stretched out. And it's not just the strikeouts, because the swinging strike rate numbers were there too. The The marks for Berea in those two games, 17.2% and 14.3% respectively. So getting whiffs, converting them into strikeouts as well, and now should have a full leash out there as a pitcher. Berea, when he was working as a reliever, did a great job of keeping hard contact in check. And that's something you want to make sure he maintains as he stretches out. And he hasn't done it quite as well as he did in the bullpen, but it's still been better than average in both of those first two starts. Again, the salary here, just $6,200. You would basically get to use whatever batters you wanted to use. And on such a wide open slate of pitcher, I really don't think that's the worst approach. So you could justify making Maria, considering salary, your top pitcher of the night. I might wind up there. I do like Gray and I do like Scherzer, but I think that Maria is at least in that discussion, which almost never happens for me for a guy with a salary at $6,200. So I'm going to have Maria in my player pool for today. I think that he should be in yours as well. There is plenty of risk here, but there are no safe pitchers on tonight's slate. So why not? Let's have some fun. Let's give it a roll and see what happens. Jaime Berea, the top value option for tonight in MLB DFS. Part of the reason why I think Berea is also in play is because the stacking options all carry pretty high salaries. So if I want to load up on the Giants, on the Dodgers, on the Reds, might need to find some way to save some salary, and Berea is there to save the day. So let's talk about the stacks here. Beginning with the Giants at Coors Field, again, make sure you check the weather there. The good thing for us as far as this game is that Coors tends to be pretty patient with playing games when there is bad weather, and it looks like the weather will clear out eventually. So I'd bet this game they get this game in, even if it doesn't start right at the scheduled first pitch time. The Giants are facing Connor Siebold, who is up to six starts in the rotation, and I think we've got enough data here to say it's a stackable situation for sure. In those six starts, he has a 5.51 skill interactive ERA, which is the highest number on the slate. 
His strikeout rate is 15%, which means he's letting up a lot of balls in play. And a lot of those balls in play are in the air and there's enough hard contact to get by as well. ERA for Seabold is 5.46, which could be a lot worse given three of those starts came at Coors Field, but the peripherals are definitely concerning. The Giants roster, very tough against righties. They just got a lot of guys back. And once you add those guys back to the active roster, they're almost near the top of the league in WRC plus against righties. So I think all signs point to the Giants being a great stack once again, and I'm going to treat them as such. So once again, the Giants are going to be our top stack of the day. Yesterday's lineup with uh, Jack Peterson back and Thayer Estrada back, I think was a pretty fun one for DFS because one through seven were all what I would deem fun daily fantasy plays. And even Patrick Bailey batting eighth is not the worst play in the world. And it gives you a lot of flexibility. So typically when I stack a team, I tend to focus pretty heavily on the guys with the most obvious paths to upside. I don't want to use a lot of guys with low ISOs who don't steal bases, stuff like that. Here, I don't need to be as concentrated because there are more options who can justifiably or who I can see getting me 30 FanDuel points, which is kind of the threshold you want to see a, a path to for hitters you're using. So I think you can diversify here within the stack. Again, I tend to, to stick to a core and build around guys pretty heavily. But here, I think I'd be OK being a bit more spread out because would it shock you if Mitch Hanniger or J.D. Davis outscored everybody else in the stack? It would not for me. So I think that my process is to be concentrated in my stacks with this one specifically, I'll be a bit more spread out and trying to get not equal exposure, but like pretty evenly distributed exposure across the hopefully top seven guys again within that giant stack for tonight. Other than Coors Field, I feel like the other two top stacks today come from the same game. That is the Reds and the Dodgers in Cincinnati. We'll start here with the Dodgers because they're the more obvious side, but I do like the Reds quite a bit as well. The Dodgers are facing Brandon Williamson. He has made four starts since joining the rotation, and it looks similar to what he was doing in the minors. The big thing is the plate discipline data. He has a 20% strikeout rate with a 12% walk rate. Both those marks are in line with what he did in AAA. And down there, his ERA before his promotion was 6.62. He's at 4.29 in the major so far, but his expected ERA is 6.30, letting up a lot of hard contact, but it just hasn't bit him as of yet. Facing the Dodgers here, and I think they're a team that could very much bring the pain. Their ISO against lefties is 250 this year, which is bananas. They have a 44% fly ball rate. And when you put that in Cincinnati, where homers flow, that's pretty dangerous. I think you could argue the Dodgers are in the same tier as the Giants here. That's how good this stack is. and. I think that we got to feel pretty good about them. So the Dodgers, to me, in the top tier of stacking tonight, despite the fact we have another game at Coors Field. Now, the one concern with the Dodgers against the lefty is that they do platoon a lot, and there's always risk that if a guy is in there to face a lefty, he could leave once the lefty is out. I'm not super concerned about that, with Chris Taylor at least. He's completed each of his past five starts he has made. He's been productive when he has played this year. If he starts, I think I'd be very intimate 27. Now that they're starting to get some guys back or they are healthier than they have been, there is risk that Taylor will leave once uh, the lefty is no longer in there. But I feel good enough about him to take that risk. Again, he's completed five consecutive starts. So I'll go with Chris Taylor. Feel pretty okay about that. And uh, ride with him at 27 if he does wind up starting for today, which I would assume that he will. Other side of the game is fun as well as mentioned. It's Noah Syndergaard facing the uh, st facing the Reds, and there are a couple reasons I'd want to stack here. The first one is that Syndergaard's baseline pitching numbers are not ideal. It sounds like his spot in the rotation may be a bit shaky as of right now. He has a 6.54 ERA with a 4.64 skill interactive ERA, and those numbers are not getting better either. He's tried upping his curveball usage his past six starts, and his Sierra actually goes up to 4.98 in that six-start sample. So the adjustments have not worked, and the Reds should be able to get some hits against him as a result. But the stolen bases are also a huge appeal in this game. The Dodgers, as a team, have let up more stolen bases than any other team in baseball, and 16 of those have come against Syndergaard specifically. The Reds have guys who will run, and I think we want to emphasize them here. And most of them give you at least a bit with the stick as well, so it's not just about the speed. So the Reds, to me, are in play because they run, 
Um, I know we should always focus on this, but I think for this one specifically, it's especially important. So to me, when I'm stacking the Reds, I am going to want to focus primarily on guys who will run because that's a key aspect of appeal in stacking against Syndergaard. I'm not going to ignore the guys who don't, but I will heavily skew towards those guys who do. And it also gives me an excuse to uh, talk up and use Ellie De La Cruz. He is more than happy to run. He had 11 stolen bases in AAA before he came up. 12 home runs, 55% hard hit rate. He will strike out a bit. Uh, that's the one negative here. But he had cleanup in his debut. His salary is $2,800. It will not be contrarian. De La Cruz might be the most popular batter on this slate, but... DFS is supposed to be fun, right? And I want to have some fun. So I'm going to use Ellie De La Cruz. I will stack the rest of the Reds too, but you know, I'm taking the 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 outlet to have some fun and uh, use Ellie De La Cruz and focusing on Reds who will steal bases. So top stacks are today going to be the Giants, the Dodgers, and the Reds. Moving on to things to watch, I did want to talk briefly about Corbin Burns. Salary is ten thousand dollars. That number is higher than either Scherzer or John Gray, which is why. Burns wasn't super high on my list, but he does seem to be trending back up. He has seven plus strikeouts in four of his past five starts. So he's back in the consideration set. I'm just not a fan of using guys against the Orioles. Um, so I'll likely be on Burns pretty soon, but I'm not quite there yet. He's he's at least viable if you like him, but I'm not quite there personally as of right now. We've gotten away from stacking against Patrick Corbin recently, and he earned that via pitching pretty well. I do think we can dabble back in those waters with Arizona tonight. Burns or Corbin is sorry. Went from talking Corbin Burns, to Patrick Corbin, very confusing, but Corbin has been letting up a 48% hard hit rate in seven starts with his slider usage being down. The uh, diamondbacks offense has hit lefties a lot better recently. So if they go overlooked, they could be a solid option. It is a revenge game for Patrick Corbin. Of course, we have to consider that as always, uh, 63% boost as a result of the revenge game, but still would consider Arizona for tonight. Finally, Randy Vasquez starting for the Yankees here, facing the White Sox. He was walking too many guys down in AAA, not a ton of swings and misses. It's a great park for home runs, obviously. So I think the White Sox are a potential stacking option beyond the others we discussed. They're not the best offense, so that's why they're pretty well below Arizona and they're below the top three stacks as well. But I'd give some consideration to the White Sox. If there is an individual you like, you can go there too. Just in general, not quite as high in them as the other ones mentioned. Let's finish up here with the dinger calls for today. We're going to go two fun batters because, again, DFS is supposed to be fun uh, while trying to earn us some money. And both these guys, I think, can do that. The boring one, Mookie Betts. Been awesome against lefties. Been awesome overall this year. He actually has more walks than strikeouts against lefties. Great park for some power. Obviously, we could have gone... Will Smith could have gone J.D. Martinez, could have gone Chris Taylor, could have gone a lot of guys against the lefty, but let's go Mookie. Mookie bets the boring home run call for today. The fun one, Ellie De La Cruz hits his first Major League Baseball home run for today, facing off against Syndergaard. Again, the main appeal against Syndergaard is a stolen bases, but De La Cruz has power too. Hit and clean up. He's at uh, Great American Ballpark. What more could you ask for? So Dinger calls for today on this Wednesday, Mookie Betts and Ellie De La Cruz. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot. But as mentioned, uh, don't forget to check out our PGA DFS podcast, breaking down the RBC Canadian Open. That is up right now in the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed. If you like what you hear, leave us a thumbs up over on YouTube or leave us a five star rating over on Apple Podcasts. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes. J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Thursday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.